Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Steph and today we are doing another book recommendation video. This is going to be a part two of if you like this book, then you'll love this book. You guys really liked the first part I did. I'll link it above. So I decided I had to do a second part and I had so many more books to talk about today. So let's just get right into it. The first book I'm going to be talking about today is Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I know is a favorite of so many people. It's a favorite of mine and it has so much hype. So I was like, I need to find a book similar to this. And then I was like, I know one that is so similar, so let me explain this book first. This book is about the Prince of England and the first son of the United States. They're both high profile political figures. They hate each other. Their parents force them to fake a friendship because they get caught publicly fighting and so they have to go on like these friend dates. So it's kind of like fake dating, but like not really. And they have to like force them to hang out. Through these hangouts, they realize they actually have so much more in common than they thought. They start texting and their relationship comes from there, but they're both famous. So they kind of have to keep it low profile. One of them is coming to terms with the sexuality. so he's not even sure what's going on and it's basically just their whole relationship. I will never stop recommending this book. I had butterflies the entire time I read it. The development of this relationship is but this book reminds me like actually so much now that I think about it of Damaged Like Us or the Like Us series by Kristen Becker Ritchie. Maximoff, his parents are like the most famous people in America. They have their own series. It's my favorite series of all time, but they're like the most famous people in America. They had a reality show. They have all the shit, kind of like the Kardashians, but like not. <laughs> he has to grow up with a bodyguard and he's had a crush on this bodyguard in their family for so long since he was like 16, but the bodyguard like never paid him any attention. He's like tattooed and really cool. When Maximoff is, I think in his 20s, 22 23 he gets assigned pharaoh the guy he's had a crush on like since he was a kid to be his bodyguard since he's famous then he has his bodyguard they have this work relationship they obviously like draw boundaries between each other he's like openly bisexual pharaoh's openly gay so it's like they know that, that that's there <laughs> and then it's the development of their relationship and it has the same trope it's not also that they're both gay that's not what i think that they have in common it's that they have like the one of us is famous or both of us is famous and we kind of have to keep this a secret because we don't know how the public is gonna react this one also has the forbiddenness of a work relationship the parents definitely would not want that to happen which is similar to this in the way that the parents don't want their relationship to happen in this book as well and they try to put up a fight and that kind of happens in this one pharaoh and maxoff have four books and i love them so much they're one of my comfort characters i just i literally love them so 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 much if you loved red white and royal blue and like the build up the relationship the angst the tension the longing the forbiddenness kind of i mean it's not actually forbidden but like your parents kind of make it seem that way or like the public makes it seem that way you'll love damage like us because it's exactly the same way with the same buildup but this one is super steamy compared to a cute little red white and royal blue but I definitely recommend it. Okay, the next two books I'm going to talk about are two books that I love so much. They have such a special place in my heart. And I don't know why they remind me of each other because honestly, they don't have that many similarities. But I just know if you love one of them, you'll love the other. So first, I'm going to talk about Beach Read by Emily Henry. January is a writer. She writes romance books. Augustus, or Gus, is a writer as well. But he writes like science fiction, I think. They were rivals all of college, always like competing for the awards and like who's about a writer, whatever. And they shared one moment together in college where they were like, I see you, you see me, you know? But after that, they just never brought it up again. Went their separate ways, graduated, never saw each other again. January's father ends up passing away and she finds out all this stuff about her dad that she had no idea when he was alive. And so she finds out he had this house by the beach where he had like a mistress and all this shit. So she is tasked to go to that house and clear it out and live there for a little while so she can just write her books in peace, clear her head. And she ends up noticing that right next door, is Gus. He lives there. And she's like, what the fuck? And they both pretend that they don't recognize each other and it's kind of like awkward at first. And then they kind of realize they are the only two at these lake houses and they're both writers and they decide to task each other with switching genres and writing as if they were the other person. So they take each other on all these little excursions. So she takes him to like the fair and all these like romancy things so he can learn how to write romance. So they're pretty much fake dating, but like not really. And then he takes her on all these like scary adventures like interviews and stuff to learn about science fiction and so basically they spend like two days a week together just doing these like fun things and like crazy things together and then obviously their relationship develops and I love this book because it is angsty but without the feeling of like I want to jump your bones you know it's kind of like a, like brush each other's leg under the table or something and then they look at each other and it's like you can feel the desire but like they don't do anything about it I love this book and I love the relationship in this book so much after this book I'm talking about The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker I just know if you love 
one of these you'll love the other so much they have the same like essence i don't know how to explain it but let me talk about the simple wild because i love this book so much and i need to talk about it so this book is about Kala. she lives in a big city in canada and she gets a call one day that her dad who she hasn't seen since she was two years old is dying and she's like what i need to form a relationship with him before he dies so she agrees to fly to alaska where he lives and live with him for like the next few weeks to get to know him and her dad owns a small like airport or like a plane company and he like flies a bunch of planes and has like private planes and so he has a plane picker up from the alaskan airport and she meets this guy named jonah and he is just like so serious so brooding does not want to put up with her does not give her the time of day he thinks she's some like posh prissy princess girl who is too good for alaska like she wanted to take like instagram pictures and he's like no why are you wearing makeup and like all this shit like you're in alaska like he gives her a hard time it's enemies to lovers in the same way this is where they're not like enemies but they give each other a really hard time jonah acts like he hates kala but like you can also tell like he doesn't <laughs> they end up being forced to spend a bunch of time together because kala's dad tasks jonah with like showing her around because he can't really because he's sick it is really good it is really really good that's like all i know how to say is like i loved the setting i loved the characters i love the relationship the tension between these two characters and she doesn't know if it's real because she's like i thought he hated me like why is he looking at me like that or like is he about to make a move i don't know and then and he's like so serious and brooding that you just don't expect him to like act on it but it is so good and i could not recommend these two books enough so definitely read beach read and the simple wild uh you will love them the next set of they're all guilty pleasure reads is what i like to call them because they're not like impactful or influential they're literally just fun angsty reads interference by harlow cole and the crush by penelope ward starting off with the crush by penelope ward i hate this cover so much like who gave this man the right to be the face of this brand anyway <laughs> basically in this book farah her brother nathan has a best friend named jace they were all super close growing up but then something super tragic happens to nathan and farah's parents jace ends up leaving town afterwards farah is heartbroken over what happened with her parents she's heartbroken over jace leaving because she relied on him so much she felt like they had a connection or whatever but she was like dealing with all of these losses at once and she was like fuck you for leaving me at this like vulnerable time and then years later he comes back and ends up moving in with them so the three of them are all living together and she is not afraid to admit that she had feelings for him barry just like bold with it like she did not care and he always kind of looked at her like a sister but now when he came back he's like shit like she's grown up like he had that realization moment and she noticed it happen and he had a girlfriend at this time she'll do things to make him jealous he'll do things to make her jealous yet they won't talk about it it's just pretty chaotic nathan is so protective of her and they live together so nathan would know if anything was going on with them too he's like no way like you guys can never be together but he starts getting a little sus they start hooking up drama this that secrets guilt over the past trauma and it's brother's best friend it has that forced proximity trope and then there's kind of an age gap i think he's six years older than her and this is dual point of view so you kind of get to see both perspectives which i like that's the crush by penelope ward and that reminded me so so much of interference by harlow cole this is actually duology it has a second book with a second chance romance because this book is the first part of the relationship which is Ashley and Brayden met each other when they were super young. Brayden becomes her brother's best friend. The brother's name is also Nathan. So random. Brayden has been so protective of her like over the top protective of her her whole life kind of let like Wattpad like nobody looks at her but me kind of thing even though we're not together and we're literally in high school or like we're literally like kids. It explores their entire relationship in high school. Them having their first love, first romance and everything but then at the end of this book something super bad happens and you're like how is she ever going to forgive him how is this ever going to go on from here and then you get the duet which is their second chance romance which kind of reminded me of when in the crush he comes back and they kind of have like their like reunite moment that happens in this book that's why i think they're similar and then so basically you get two books of two relationships with between the same people so you have like their first relationship something really bad that happens and then him kind of groveling which i like <laughs> and she's trying to figure out her life now that something super bad happens the brother in this book is so protective of her and so mad at Brayden when he finds out about everything. This book is so much drama and is very entertaining. If you need entertainment, read this duet. It is up and down, back and forth, drama, craziness, and it kept me entertained. Next two books I'm going to talk about are two really fun reads with the quirky girl, serious guy trope. I'm not the biggest fan of this trope. Like, sometimes I feel like the quirkiness goes a little too far to where I'm like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about it. But A 99% Mind by Sally Thorne and Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This one 
one has like badass girl, sweet, wholesome guy. Darcy is the main character in this book. She works at a bar. She just like likes going off on people. She's confrontational. And her whole life she's known Tom, who's her twin brother's best friend. And Tom, she's always thought is like the perfect guy. Like he's so like respectful. She just admires him so much, but they haven't seen each other for a while until Darcy inherits a house from her grandma and needs help renovating it. Tom owns a construction company or works at a construction company. So he takes on the role of renovating her house. So they have that forced proximity trope. She thinks he's engaged, but he has, doesn't really talk about it, but everyone knows he's engaged. She starts feeling like an attraction to him. You can see it's kind of reciprocated, but she is so outspoken and not afraid to speak what she thinks. Like sometimes she got a little carried away, but she was so honest with him all the time and like wasn't afraid to be like, you're hot, I wanna be with you. And he's kind of like quiet and not like that. I thought he was so hot, like quiet, but like knows what he's doing. That's Tom. And this book reminded me so much of Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating because this book is about this really quirky girl named Hazel and her best friend since college, his name is Josh, just went through a really rough breakup and she's like, okay, let's get you back in the dating scene. So they start going on like these double dates where they set each other up with someone and they like pick who the other one's gonna go out with. And somehow things would always go wrong in their dates and they'd always end up together at the end of the night. It's friends to lovers, very quirky girl, serious guy, which is similar to this. And if you want like fun, upbeat, not too serious, light, easy, one sitting reads, I would read these two. Okay guys, I'm quickly interrupting to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. Because I'm a YouTuber, I chose the class YouTube Success Script, Shoot, and Edit, which is taught by Marquise Brownlee, and I love it because it has all these videos on how to plan what you're going to make in your video, how to engage your audience, how to shoot the video, how to edit it, how to post it, and grow your channel, which is just everything I need. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, you're creative. Discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's live classes, experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along with other members. And something so exciting is that the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video let's get back into the book recommendations. Sorry for the change of scenery, but as I was editing, I realized I lost half the footage to this video, but I'm still gonna talk about books. Next books I'm gonna be talking about that remind me of each other are The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I read this book recently and absolutely fell in love with it. It was literally perfect. And this book reminds me of Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. Let me explain each of them. So Stella is autistic and you learn that right from the beginning. She's like high functioning autism, I think Asperger's, and she's really dedicated to her work. She's super good at it. She works in economics and she loves it, but she struggles with like human relationships and connections and being socially awkward and stuff like that. And this boy at her work is like, oh, like maybe someone would date you if you weren't so awkward. Like you need some practice, especially with like sex. So she feels really ashamed. Her parents are putting a lot of pressure on her to get a boyfriend and start a family because she's like 30 years old now. So she hires a male escort to teach her the ways of being in a relationship and being intimate with someone. And the escort she hires is Michael, who is the male love interest. They set up when they're gonna meet, what they're gonna do. She plans everything out. Obviously, it starts turning into more than that. The boy in this book, when you find out why he's escorting his family, his situation, their love story is so, so cute. He knows perfectly how to comfort her and be there for her and he's so caring and she is so adorable and I just loved this this book so much and the reason to remind me of tools of engagement by Tess Bailey is these are both written in the third person so you're not in any characters head specifically but in this book, Wes moves to a new town. He is taking care of his niece because his sister is like not the best mother. She leaves for a while and Wes is taking care of his niece. And so it's kind of like a single parent trope and he's working at a construction company where Bethany, the heroine, is like the stage designer and her family owns the whole company. Wes starts working for them and he immediately is attracted to Bethany. It's definitely like boy falls first. He is the only one that sees that Bethany is not perfect. Everyone thinks that Bethany 
Bethany is the most perfect girl they've ever seen. She has her life together. She plans everything out. Everyone just thinks that she is perfect. And he walks in on her having a panic attack. And from that moment on, she's embarrassed because someone actually saw her struggling with anxiety. She has really bad anxiety. And he sees it and he understands her and is able to help her. And she doesn't want it. She's super stubborn. But their romance is so cute. The way that he is able to help her reminded me so much of the kiss quotient kind of like the girl is struggling with something and the guy just knows how to be there for them and be so understanding and helpful and both of these books are super super steamy like they don't look like it they look like cute little fun reads both of them were very steamy and i loved both of these books so much and they definitely remind me of each other okay the next pair of books that remind me of each other are actually by the same author which i know is kind of cheating because like obviously books by the same author are gonna remind me of each other but the tropes in this book and the characters in this book and the development of the relationship in both of these books were so similar that i had to include it and that is from lukov with love by mariana zapata and Colty by Mariana Zapata. I love her writing. If you love Slow Burn, Enemies to Lovers, you would love all of Mariana Zapata's books because I'm pretty sure they're like almost all like that, but these two especially. So From Luke Off With Love is about this girl named Jasmine. She's a figure skater, but recently she's been trying so hard. She hasn't been able to find a partner to figure skate with. She hasn't been competing. She's kind of been out of the game and not doing her best and not living her dream. But Ivan, who is also a figure skater at her same ice rink that she's been competing against since she was a child, his his partner quits or gets injured or something and he needs a partner. They reluctantly team up and do not get along but he acts like he hates her but he's so like teasing with it. It's not in like a cruel mean way. Like I feel like it was like you could tell he didn't actually hate her and they have like a mutual understanding of each other because now they're teammates which turns into a friendship and he is so cute like during their friendship stage. He's super protective of her and then it develops into a relationship slowly, a slow burn. Mariana's Pada is always like you have to follow the whole story and then at the end you get a big love bomb and then it's over so you have to wait to the end and it's a pretty thick book but it was so so good and the characters in this book and the relationship remind me of Colty which is also a sports romance this is soccer and this is between a coach and a player they're both like in their 20s or he's she's in her 20s he's in 30s and that reminded me the same thing they're teammates this is coach player so it's the same kind of dynamic except this one is unique in the way that the girl Sal when she was young idol idolized Colty, that's his last name. She idolized him. He was her favorite soccer player. She had posters of him in her room. And then when she grows up, she's on a professional soccer team. He is her coach and she hates him now. She literally can't stand him. He is so rude, so quiet and disrespectful. She is not afraid to stand up to him. Even though she used to idolize him, she's not afraid to admit that she does not like him now. And he is so closed off and cold, but eventually they develop a friendship and a bond. She starts getting him to break out his shell. They start hanging out outside of soccer the other teammates get mad. Their friendship remind me of From Luke Off With Love. Both of these goes from enemies to best friends to lovers. This book was so good. The tension between them like had me on my toes the entire time I was reading it. Um, but these books definitely remind me of each other and I just love them both so much. I love Mariana's Potter's writing with my whole heart. Okay, the next books I'm going to talk about, the first two combined remind me of the third book. And I'm not going to go into too much depth about the first two because I compared them to each other in my last, if you like this book, you'll love this book video. So, so you could just check out that video to get why I correlated these two books. I recently read The Spanish Love Deception and it was five stars. So good, guys. If you know me, you know I am a hating game stan. Like one of my favorite books of all time. The Hating Game and The Unhoneymooners are two of my five star reads and they remind me so much of each other. The guy is like so closed off. It's grumpy sunshine and it turns out he like loved her the whole time even though he acted like he hated her. It's like that kind of trope. And so these two books remind me so much of The Spanish Spanish love deception if these two books had a baby it would literally be the Spanish love deception I'm telling you because it has the workplace romance and the wedding kind of fake dating trope they're all equal to me like I love the hating game and the Spanish love deception the same amount I wish I had the physical copy but I literally just finished reading it on my phone so I don't have it yet the hating game and the Spanish love deception were so similar in the buildup let me explain the Spanish love deception so it's about this girl named Lena and she works at this engineering company she's one of the only girls there she's like a leader she has like a high position at this company and one of the other leaders at this company is Aaron Blackford. Oh my god, he's so hot. I can't. But basically, since the day he started working there, Lena overheard Aaron talking shit about her. So she's 
always held a grudge against him and felt so like small whenever she's around him because she heard him say something about her that really stuck with her. Him and her have this kind of rivalry. They've never gotten along. They butt heads. He's super blunt. And if you love Josh from The Hating Game, he's like Aaron Blackford's twin. Lena gets invited to her sister's wedding where her sister is engaged to her ex-boyfriend's brother. That's confusing. But her ex-boyfriend is going to be at this wedding and he is engaged, she finds out. So she doesn't want to show up to this wedding alone. So she comes up with this whole plan. She tells her whole family she has a boyfriend where she's just going to find someone to go with her. But when it gets down to it, she has no one to really go with her. Aaron, her coworker, ends up volunteering to go with her. And he's like, yeah, I'll go. Like, I'll go with you. And so it turns into a fake dating trope. She's reluctant. But then he ends up needing her to be his fake date for something. So it evens out so they both use each other to go on these two fake dates the development of the relationship it was so so good it was one of those fake dating tropes where you could tell the guy was so into it that is why it reminded me of the unhoneymooners you know they meet at a wedding and then they fake date kind of on the honeymoon they go to the wedding it's in spain so they have to fly there together and it's one of those tropes where you can tell the guy is just way too into it to be faking he gets super close with her whole family and it also had that trope where like her ex-boyfriend was there and you could see aaron was starting to get a little possessive but like are you supposed to be faking are you being real you can just tell he's obsessed with her his love language is definitely physical touch and it is so cute i just love this book so much i had butterflies the entire time i read it i read it in one sitting and it was so long i think it's like twice the size of these books but i have like the biggest crush on aaron blackford right now like he is my number one book boyfriend at the moment i'm obsessed with him and i want to reread that book for the rest of my life definitely a five star literally couldn't be any more perfect the last books i'm going to talk about in today's video i talk about so so much i feel like but i still want to mention them in one of these videos in case you guys didn't watch my other videos where i mentioned these books and i know this book is trending so i'm gonna bring it up is the people we meet on vacation by emily henry this book is past present perspective friends to lovers alex and poppy met in college they couldn't be any more opposite but they somehow strike up a friendship and decide to go on a vacation every single year together but they're just best friends and they have like girlfriends and boyfriends on the side but they always end up just the two of them and something happened between them that you're trying to figure out why they're not talking anymore so you're getting the past and present perspective of them when they were going on all these vacations together and you can see them kind of falling in love like friends to lovers but it keeps getting mentioned in the present chapters that something happened between them that caused them to no longer speak and so then in the present chapters you're watching them reunite and re-fall in love and that is so 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 similar to love in other words by christina Lauren. Love in Other Words is also a friends to lovers, but it's childhood friends to lovers. Past and present perspective. In the past, you're watching them fall in love from when they were in elementary school all the way through the end of high school, and you can tell it's building up to why they broke up. And then the present perspective is them seeing each other again after years that go by. She is engaged to someone else, but she sees Elliot, her childhood best friend that she fell in love with in high school. There's an instant connection between them, but she can't forget what happened between them. And you're like, what happened between you? And you don't get to find up to the end so you watch them fall in love as kids and then fall in love again as adults all the way to the build-up of what happened between them and that is why these are so similar i know if you love one you'll absolutely love the other just because of how similar they are the characters are different the storyline's different what happened between them is obviously different but the past present friends to lovers is exactly the same and i know you'll love them this is one of my favorite books of all time and i love this book four and a half out of five stars just so so good love them both okay everyone that is the end of today's video thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope that there are books in this video that you already love so you can now find more books that you love i love doing this kind of video i feel like it's super helpful i would love to watch a video like this about my favorite books to see what else i could read that relates to it if you want to follow me on my other social medias they are all linked down below as always and i'll see you in my next video very very soon bye